In this video I want to demonstrate how to generate the results in Kapasi to perform a dose response such that uh, a dose response study such that we can take the data to GraphPad Prism and use the EC anything to calculate the EC50. So the results, uh, the instructions are, are shown here and it ends up giving us results that look like this for the graph. I'll show you the Excel spreadsheet with that graph. So this is the same data. Um, the log dose or the uh, dose shown as picomoles on the top here or nanograms per uh, milliliter ml um, and then converted to log. So here's the log, there's a nanogram per mil in this, and then this is the column that we're graphing, the uh, dependent variable. And what we're changing is the concentration of TGF beta that we are giving uh, exogenously. So this is the picomolar concentration. Uh, and we'll be uh, actually expanding that. Uh, found literature, actually information from uh, companies that sell it, and I'll show you those in just a moment, sell the TGF beta to fill in some of the blanks here, but uh, we're going to be going from 0 nanograms per mil to um, 100 nanograms per mil. So if we come here to this one, the cell signaling source of TGF, uh, is that the antibody? Oh, I ended up getting the antibody. Drats. That wasn't what I wanted. Anyway, uh, I've got another one here. <laughs> this data sheet. So that one that I was just trying to show you, um, I clicked on the antibody instead, but uh, they report a ED50 of 4 to 10 nanograms per ml. Um, <clears throat> when you apply it in the inactive form and 0 0.2 to point. Uh, 0 0.8 nanograms per mil after acid activation. Uh, that's the uh, latent TGF beta one. And then the TGF beta one that doesn't require the activation has uh, an EC or ED50 of 0 0.04 to 0 0.20 uh, nanograms per mil uh, in each lot. So there's a little bit of vari variation there. And here in this one, you see uh, the uh, ED50 or EC50 uh, by this source's uh, ability to inhibit um, proliferation as 0.05 nanograms per mil. So from a variety of sources like this um, and other ones that actually showed the curve. Let me see what data. Yeah. Um, found a range from 0 to 100 uh, nanograms per mil. So that's uh, that's what I have proposed for us to use. So what I'm going to do is um, run a series of re uh, simulations with Kapasi in this uh, transforming growth rate growth factor beta 1 signaling pathway where we are uh, having an, an endpoint of gene expression of collagen 1, in this case to study uh, asthma. <coughs> uh, and we want to be able to compare the EC50s for TGF beta between the non-asthmatic and the asthmatic and the asthmatic um, before and after. Uh, treatment with a, a corticosteroid, you know, so do the uh, responses to TGF beta change. Anyway, what we'll be changing is this reactant here. So I just have this set up so I can see the species. I've got that expanded. So I've got where I can see that. I can see the time course. I've got my time set at uh, 600 intervals, 6,000 um, uh, seconds for the duration. And I've got it set to suppress the output before the six, uh, 60,000, excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm just collecting the last data point because we get a, a plateau effect in the end. 
And so I just need that point. And what I'm going to do uh, is um, run it with the report. So with the first dose, I have to activate this report. One is the levels report. I just, just leave it as by default. I always use report one as levels. But anyway, <clears throat> we can call it levels. So the first time I run it, I'm going to click the title row. And I've got to remember that every time, at, or the second time, to uh, uncheck that. Uh, and you'll see why once we, um, they're all going to dump into one Excel file. That's the thing. So the first time we run it, we've got our title row. And then every time after that, and then this set of numbers, so that's the zero dose. And then every time after that, uh, we don't want this repeated, so we uncheck it and we just dump the, the values for all the species. Okay, so that's what we're up to. Uh, let's go to our doses. This, I can make this smaller so we can see the doses over there. So here, then, under the time course, let me get this set so I can see my TGF beta exogenous. I've got it fixed at zero. You can see it's still showing what I had run from the last time, but that changes after the simulation. So this is all that we care about is changing this value here. And then on the time course, we've got it all set. And then we go to report and we've got append checked. We don't need to confirm the overwrite. We're running the levels. Uh, report and then if I click this it'll take us to the the folder in which uh, we have this and I'm running right now the uh, <clears throat> sample the patient ID 144 you can see it up here 144 um, so that's the file name that I've given it the dose response and remember the report when I run it on zero has the um, uh, the check for the column headings. So then uh, I run it. You saw a little circle there, it's done. I'm going to go to my report, levels, uncheck this, and then go back up and exogenous. And now I have to put in, we're, we're running it in picamol, or picamoles, you can see picamol per liter here. So then we go to 0 0.782. 0 0.782. Commit, time course, run. And then back up here, we need 2.34, 2.34, commit, time course, run. This simulation runs very rapidly, so it's, it's a nice one to do it. 2.34, 3.9, especially when there's 116 subjects in this study. Uh, time course, run. We may not run the dose response curve on all of them. So 3.91, <clears throat> commit, time course, run. <clears throat> and it's good, I'm just going through it because we're recording, but it's good to go and check your Excel file, open it, <laughs> your text file, open it in Excel and make sure you're, you're going in sequence. 7.82, 23.46, Commit, time course, run. And so note, after we run, uh, this ends up equal to what we put in. 78.2. <clears throat> Commit, time course, run. Back to here. 78.2, 234. 234.6. Commit, time course, run. I want to get all this in the file so that uh, I'll open it up and show you how to graph it if we still have time. 391. Five, eight, six point five. <clears throat> Seven eight two commit time course run 
7821564 time course run 3128 imagine doing a dose curve a dose study like this in vitro or in vivo <clears throat> uh, 4692 Time course run and then seven eight two zero oh. will never find me running s studies in a wet lab ever again. Okay, our dose response is finished and uh, I'm in the wrong folder. 4302, placebo, dose response, 424, 424, that's the one we just ran. Everything is set to default. <clears throat> okay, so there's one we had before. I can delete that. I uh, appended to the, oh, the one I had done before. Okay. <clears throat> uh, you can come in here. Copy this column to get my log. You can see the formulas that I have in there. It's the log 10. Let me just save this as an Excel file. I gotta change the name because the other one is open, but this is all of them. And so all we do is come to our collagen one here, do this, insert. That's a pretty nice graph right there, even without putting it on the select the data. Come here. Do the log dose. Let's see, I wonder if it picks up that as the axis title. No, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and I can come here, get rid of the legend now. So that's our, our dose response curve. Uh, and this is the log of the dose. Um, if you want to change it, you can just select the data, edit here. You can put in, let's see, there's the TGF beta. This would be for the picomolar dose. And then um, we can come here, picomolars. Copy. Insert the copied cell. Shift them to the right. Oh. Undo. Let me just paste them down here. Insert. Bring this up here. Replace. And a gram per mil with nothing. Okay, close that. Select our data, edit this. I can show both of them. So that now shows the, the dose in picomoles on top, picomolar, and uh, nanograms per mil down here. You saw it there. Now I'll take it to uh, GraphPad Prism and uh, use this column and this column uh, to run the same uh, analysis that I did here. It's actually the same data uh, to get this curve. I just wanted to fill in more of the doses in there to see what I've uh, complete what I've found in the literature and for the company's sources. 
And so when we do that, we look here, the ECF is 1.795.